If you're not getting what you really want in life, it is your self-talk that is failing you. Today, we're going to shift that perspective and give you the tools that will calm your mind and change the thoughts that will change your life. Welcome to the No Bow Tie Show. I'm John No Bow Tie Swoboda, author, musician, and mindset mentor. Get ready to discover your unique edge, tools to conquer doubt, and the power to live with limitless joy. Anytime you have a goal to improve yourself, you're going to be met with some resistance because your mindset wants to stay comfortable. But you're not going to reach those goals by staying comfortable. You're going to have to reach out and you're going to have to work through the resistance. And so often in your own mind, in your self-talk, you'll be held back by doubt. And the doubt shows up in what I call a yeah, but form. You have a thought and in the back of your mind you say, yeah, but. So um, you finished a goal and you say, oh, yeah, but such and such did better. Or yeah, but that's really not going to cut it this week. And you start comparing yourself to other people. You start comparing yourself to where you wish you would have been. And you're having a hard time just accepting that you made progress. When you have that self-doubt, when you have the yeah, but mentality, you're erasing a balanced mindset in favor of a negative perspective. And it's so easy to believe because you are, again, you're narrating your life from the inside out and you're, you're looking through the wrong lens. It's more important to get a balanced perspective on it, a realistic view of what is actually going on and what is actually possible for, for what you're wanting to get done, rather than just inserting these false positives that are going to they're going to negate your momentum because you don't believe it deep down inside. The yeah but mentality comes from unmet expectations. You're disappointing yourself. And that's why it's so believable because you're just confirming that you didn't do it. You're you're confirming a failure, not your potential. Now it's a great idea to be more neutral in the matter. I'll give, let me give you an example, a simple example. You wake up, you have plans for the day, and you look outside and it's raining. And your first thought was, oh my God, every time that we plan something, it rains. It has totally ruined the day, ruined the event. What are we going to do now? I'm just going to forget this. And, you, and then, you know, the trail of thought that comes in to back all of that support. Because it's true. It is raining out. And it wasn't part of the plan. But if you look out the window and you say, it's raining, what can we do within that? What kind of fun can we have within it? Can we be productive? Can we, have, can we be together? Can we have some connection? Is there, are there other options we can take? It's not about thinking positive. It's about being realistic about the situation and the possibilities that are in it. This neutral zone that you can get in gives you a great jumping off point for balance. And balance is the key for perspective. And perspective is where you're going to find strength. I have a student, a young girl who's 12 years old, and she was bombarded with fear of doing a recital, of playing her guitar in recital, but she really wanted to. But the phobia held her back. And she had a serious imbalance and she couldn't find that neutral zone on her own. And she, she wanted to come to the recital and she was going to play anyway. And she thought, if I just think positive, everything will be fine. That was the problem because it's not. It's not going to be fine if you just think positive. You're still scared. And if, she, and if she went in there and fumbled in front of everybody, she still has the experience of failing right in front of everybody and walks out probably more insecure than before. And positive thinking is not going to come in and fix that. You're not going, it doesn't work that way. Instead, we had a talk about reaching this neutral zone. I, I, I just called it, get a starting point that's good for you. And so what she did, it was great. It was, she is a champion of herself. She decided to go to the recital. She brought her guitar. She brought her music. She went to the recital and she gave herself 
the option to not play. And she just wanted to be a part of the group. She wanted to experience the fear without the failure. But she also wanted to get perspective on what it was really like to go be involved and leave being okay, that it didn't kill her, it didn't, didn't weigh her down. And after the recital, I talked to her and I thanked her for coming and for being a part of that group. And you know what she said? The first thing out of her mouth, she said, I want to play the next recital, sign me up. And she had found a strength within herself by being in that neutral zone, by being in that objective perspective that she could do one thing about it that did work for her, and it did put her foot in the door toward what she really wanted. You might struggle with finding that neutral zone yourself that helps you create the balance that you need to move forward, especially if you're feeling threatened with a situation or that you your momentum in life is being held back, being suppressed by something. The best that I can offer you on that, I have a worksheet. And on the worksheet, it puts you through a process and I can guarantee results that you will get a grip on your thinking and your perspective that will allow you to make decisions that are best for you. The decisions that you need that work for you in your life that will move you forward. This is not about backing out of life and, and getting in another comfort zone that covers up your progress. This is about making the decisions that do work for you and that, that you are comfortable using your strength to move forward. So get this worksheet. Just go to nobowtie.com slash life, and I'll send it to you immediately. I can guarantee you will get results from working through that worksheet. When you allow yourself into that neutral zone, you'll have the freedom to think, and you'll be thinking from a position of, of what is best for you, not what is expected of you. And it blocks out, for the, for the meantime, it blocks out all of the positive thinking that you're not believing anyway. I had another student who suffered from ADD so bad that he was embarrassed to take the lessons. He couldn't make it through the traditional type of learning. And we had a talk about what works for him in it. And he, you know, he described that the length of the pieces was hampering him down and that to follow the rules that are had in music with doing dynamics and all of that, that he couldn't stay focused on the traditional method of learning. And it was just inhibiting him to where he wasn't, he wanted to quit. He wanted to quit everything. And so we had to talk about what does work for him while, for him while staying in motion toward what he wanted and he wanted to play well. And the thing that, that we did, we broke it down and said, go ahead and break some rules, but be active in it. And go ahead and make up your own tradition, uh, make your own, uh, your own template for how to use dynamics. And I even suggested cut a piece in half, give it a title that you like, and play it the way you want to play it, but just be in motion with it. By doing that, he gained the strength that then allowed natural positive thinking to occur when he looked in the mirror and he couldn't help but think positive. And that is a strength that, that works exponentially in your self-esteem. When that kicks in and you believe what, you're pos what is possible for you, you will take more action in a creative and productive way, just like he did. The last recital that we had, he, he is an 11-year-old boy. And that last recital, he played a piece by J.S. Bach from the first cello suite, three pages long. He did it on his own. He worked through eight measures at a time until he had the whole thing memorized because he knew that he had a strength in using his brain in the way that was best for him. The most common obstacles that we have, and I'm sure you've experienced this too, is we have runaway thinking. I was out running uh, the other day and I started having some negative thoughts and they built up momentum. And by the end of the run, I wasn't enjoying anything because I couldn't think about anything else. Do you ever have that happen 
where you get an avalanche of thought going and you can't control it. You, you almost enjoy the energy that comes from either the judgment or the hate or the anger that you're dwelling on in your mind, but you want to break that. The best way, of course, one is don't start. But the other way is write your thoughts down or, you know, put them somewhere. Somehow record your thoughts and reflect on them on why you have the exaggerations that you have, why you're believing the exaggerations and be honest with yourself about the better thoughts that you can have and just get a starting point, get a push off point where you can build a strength and noticing when you're starting it again and suppress that right away. And you will allow very natural positive thinking to take over that makes you proud of the way that you can address it. But sometimes, unfortunately, life can be overwhelming. And we don't know if working on small things is really going to make a difference. And, and we lose sight that it will. We lose perspective. And that can be overwhelming and overpowering because then life is happening to you. For example, I have a friend who had a, a diagnosis of a brain tumor and he had to go in for the surgery. His whole life just changed in a visit to the doctor, his whole life. He couldn't work. He had to get the surgery. He lost his income. He's begging friends and family for money to pay rent. Meanwhile, having a hard time finding food to eat. And in that situation, I have a hard time telling him, hey, just start small and everything's going to work out. Matter of fact, that is one of the one of the cliche examples of positive thinking being a load of crap. But the thing that we we agreed on was that if he could keep an eye on his perspective while he was doing the things every day, because you are working on a small level, you are working each day on your life in each moment. And in those moments, to do what you can about your situation, and then let that be enough. Take the time and visit that neutral zone and just say, you know what, I have done enough. One thing that he shared with me is he was so exhausted one day because of the, the brain surgery and the way it was taxing and fatiguing him, that he couldn't get a motivation to do anything. And he needed to get some laundry done. That's all it was. He did the laundry and his self-doubt, his self-talk kicked in and said, yeah, but, yeah, but, there it is again, the monster. He said, yeah, but, I really need to get a lot more done. But he sat down, he went to that neutral zone, he said, I did do that. I did get that done. And for today, for right now, that is enough. And would you believe by giving himself that permission, that breath of value to his effort, later on it motivated him to do more. And then when he, he compounded that, he did more and more. And a natural sense of positive thinking began to seep through the cracks and it gave him the power and it gave him the strength that he needed to make some of the phone calls that he was having a hard time making, to make the visit back to the doctor. And it can give you the strength that you need. So when you get in that zone, act on it a little at a time. And don't concern yourself if you're not conquering the world and you're not conquering the huge monster. But let yourself know that you are doing something about it and sometimes a little bit is enough. Well, we've run out of time, but before I go, I have a favor to ask of you. When you're working through the worksheet or you're just going through your own thoughts in your life and you're getting into the neutral zone and you're making decisions with a better perspective, please share with me some of the results that you get from it. It inspires me to do it more and then we can, we can have that energy cycling between us. So please leave that with me. And uh, before I go, I want to share with you a, an obstacle that I had. I've been wanting to record this piece. It's a Bach, uh, a Bach prelude number nine. And my goal was to memorize it. And it's, it was huge for me. I, was, I just couldn't get it. And so what I did, I thought, well, I'm going to record all that I can 
which I can do, and share it with you. So you'll get to see me fail in this Bach piece, but you'll also get to see realistically where I got with it and where I can jump off from there. So you have a great week. Be sure to subscribe at nobowtie.com slash live and enjoy Bach Prelude number nine. Almost.